is the centenary of the Russian Revolution a cause for celebration or regret? To discuss this, I'm joined by the former Labour and Respect MP George Galloway and the journalist Peter Hitchens. Good morning, morning. to you both. Morning. Um, let me start with you, George Galloway. Is the October Revolution a cause for celebration? Well, if not for the October Revolution, we'd be conducting this interview in German. Although the truth is, this interview wouldn't be taking place and we probably wouldn't be alive for a variety of reasons. The Soviet Union broke the back of Hitler, as Mr. Churchill often opined in Parliament and elsewhere. If not for the Soviet Union, Hitler would have ruled and his successors, perhaps until now, from uh, Vladivostok uh, all the way to Portugal. So, but but you, so you say we wouldn't be able to have this discussion. Mm. In the former Soviet Union, we wouldn't be able to have a conversation that's like also, this either. That's also uh, true, uh, but even the, the sun well, George has... George will be able to say that in the former <laughs> Soviet Union without any difficulty Even the sun has spots on its face, as uh, they used to say in the Soviet Union. There is no doubt, as your package just made clear, uh, tremendous aberrations, big crimes, uh, a lot of suffering. But if not for the transformation, then the uh, Soviet Union, Russia's GDP increased by 850% in 10 years from 1930 uh, to 1940 in the Nazi occupation. And the strength that defeated Hitlerism would not have been there. Peter Hedges, do you, does it offend you that there are people celebrating 100 years of Russia? Offend? No, but here's what you really wouldn't have been able to say in the Soviet Union in which I lived. You wouldn't have been able to say that it was set up by a cynical Putsch, uh, almost bloodless, but leading to an immense sea of blood, uh, engineered by the German imperial government using Lenin as its agent, uh, that there had already been a revolution in Russia in February of 1917, which had begun a process of turning Russia for the first time into a liberal democracy, that Lenin suppressed the results of the only fair election Russia ever had uh, with military force uh, because his party lost it, uh, that this was the inauguration of an immensely long period of repression, brutality, secret police, concentration camps and lies, uh, which I'm delighted to have seen come to an end in my lifetime. And I cannot see why anybody looking at that disastrous country in which so much misery was needlessly imposed on so many people for so long could possibly celebrate the beginning of it, which was completely avoidable. And as I say, was purely the result of the cynical, uh, the cynical foreign policy and, and, and intelligence operations of the imperial German government trying to save its skin. But ev everyone, the including World George Galloway, acknowledges the tyranny and the terror well, does followed. he? Well, he gives us statistics about GDP, but fails to mention the the, 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 well, the, the uh, hecatombs uh, of people look, murdered in, now, in, in, in uh, labor camps. Peter's now a 19th so century uh, conservative, but he was, of course, formerly a Trotskyite. I he formerly, was, yeah. he formerly sang the praises of Lenin, uh, which I have not done today, nor ever. I've never been a communist, unlike Peter Hitchens, uh, but I do acknowledge and celebrate that an entirely different world opened up as a result of the events in October 1917. China, you've just seen the party Congress decorated with the iconography of the Bolshevik Revolution and China is the most uh, powerful or soon will be the most powerful country on the earth. With one uh, of the most repressive governments. Well, it I has. Know. Well, I don't think that that's true. There is repression in China, but the this success... This is repression in China. The, the enormous success, repression in China. Well, How could you possibly the, the argue success, that China has taken more people out of poverty in the last 30 years than any country, any regime, any system ever has. All, and des all despots no, always, don't, don't, all, all despots uh, always argue as they as they try and as try and distract your attention from the mountains of skulls behind them uh, to, to their supposed economic success, which generally doesn't turn out to be as great as, as claimed. Well, the Soviet Union was it was it was an enormous pile of rust by the time I lived there and was a complete economic catastrophe as well as being. That's a why it fell failure. down. Yeah. Why do you? No, wh that's why it fell why, down. Why, but we're why, talking why about the revolution. Yes, yes, because is it years not ago. possible to separate the two events? Uh, a popular overthrowing of the government is different, possibly, from the terror and the tyranny that followed, popular, and one doesn't necessarily lead to the other. There was, there was no other. popular overthrow. This is a myth. You show this as Eisenstein propaganda as, as, if it were, as if it were fruit, as if it, as if it were fact. The, the, what you see is, is, is film made afterwards. What actually happened was a putsch in the middle of the night in which, in, in which hardly anybody it was, was very popular. very esoteric popular. point. The, 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 it's not, the they're not esoteric at all. The, 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 nobody has You're even mentioned the Russian. You're, You're obsessed by mentioned, that German connection, no but not even, the one I opened No one's even mentioned 
are more important. No, no, they're both important. That no one's even mentioned during the, the, this year until now. There was a Russian Revolution. There were two. The first one was a genuine, a genuine uprising, an overthrow of an autocracy, and I think we can all be glad of it. The second one was a cynical, foreign-financed putsch, and it and it doesn't deserve to be treated as if it were a popular uprising it, I mean, or spoken I mean, of as if it was. I mean, is is that not true that a Menshevik Russia might have done rather better than a Bolshevik one? Uh, well, it's kind of not my business, and it's it's entire counterfactual. Uh, uh, fiction, uh, if I unlike the thing the, with which you open uh, this, with which you open this, this discussion. Well, look, that's the most important thing. That if not for the Soviet Union, we wouldn't be here. Hitlerism might still command most of the world with its allies. Possibly, so, but then again, if there had been, if there had been no Bolshevik Revolution, there might well have been no Hitler as, as well. The effect of, of Bolshevism on international communism, and particularly on Europe, in the ensuing 20 years was colossal. Well, look, these, so, well let's, let, let's bring it all a little bit more up to date. Okay. You, were, you, were, you were saying earlier, you've never been a Leninist, even though um, Peter Hitchens confesses that you I were at one, I, one, I, one, I, one I, time. I, I absolutely was a Trotskyist, and, mm. and, and, and that's one but of the reasons I, I now know uh, of the, com the complete folly of that political Position. There I are senior members of the Labour Party, like Joe McDonnell, who says he's a Marxist, he's a Leninist, openly. Is that a problem for the Labour Party? I would have thought Marx was rather more popular and respected now than he's been for quite some time, as capitalism uh, appears to collapse around our ears. From 2008, the economist itself, the Bible of capitalism, began to resurrect uh, Marxian economics and analysis. Uh, so I, I, I really don't think that it is. Jeremy Corbyn Come on, If there's one thing that could make our Marxist. economic conditions worse, it would be a five-year plan. Well, it only took I mean, them four, these, as I these, said. They, they, five they, for whatever the, the alternative to our present conditions it may them. be, it's not that. Well, I, I think that we are moving into an era where governments, like the Chinese government, are making plans and are succeeding in implementing them and thus transforming their position. China in 1949 I don't need to tell you, was just about the most backward place you could possibly imagine. And from 1949 to now, it has so transformed that it is the world's biggest wait, wait economy wait, wait, and, wait, wait, and wait, about to become yes, the world's most important economy. We're, 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 we're in danger great, of getting great, distracted the great too much by forward. China here. Peter, no, let me no, ask we, you we, this. Well, I, have to, I have to put a point in here. If China was backward in 1949, it was far more backwards by the time Mao Zedong had finished his great leap forward and s deliberately starved millions of his people to death in a, in, a, in a period of economic lunacy. But, but let's bring this back, back to the present to day. What was interesting about bad. what George was saying there, and, and a sense of, certainly amongst younger voters in this country, uh, and in others where they are turning against capitalism, they don't think that it has worked or delivered for them, that this kind of Marxist-Leninist philosophy is becoming more popular? Well, let's hope not. I mean, the fact, the fact that the current system is failing doesn't seem to me to recommend the Soviet system, which demonstrably failed, and, and which even its own leaders admitted had failed, which is why they, they tried and failed to reform it in the period when I was there, and that's when it completely collapsed. Whatever else you might want to conclude, from examining our position, the Soviet alternative is not the thing you would want to choose. This was a, a, a long period of disaster. And I remember at the end of it, watching in a, in a Moscow cinema, a film which has never been shown in the West, uh, called Tak Zhidnizya, which, which means approximately we cannot go on living like this, made by Stanislav Gavryukin, which for the first time, uh, by Politburo permission, told the truth about what life was like in that dreadful place. And everyone in that cinema was weeping because finally they, they, they saw the truth being told about the dreadful anti-civilization in which they've been compelled to live for so long. And the idea that we, we should celebrate it or revive it seems to me to be verging on the obscene. George, I mean, one interesting question about this, of course, is that whilst there are events going on in London and across the UK to mark this centenary, it's not being celebrated in Russia. Well, I was in Russia a couple of weeks ago. There's a big debate about whether it ought to be, and there are many people celebrating it. The President Communist Putin is not. I mean, he would very much not. like people to ignore it completely. He's not. But the, the Communist Party is the second biggest party in Russia. Uh, and it is the ruling party in China, which is not a separate, with respect to you, Sarah, it's not a separate thing because China is continuing the Russian Revolution and doing rather better at it than the Russians did. But uh, there are many people, uh, particularly older people, that's true, uh, who think that the era of the Soviet Union was better than the a very cold bath of capitalism that uh, succeeded it. Uh, so half the world uh, followed for a time the red flag, the red banner uh, of Lenin, 
No one will do so again. Leninism, of the kind that Peter used to proselytize, is definitely not coming okay. back. But Marxism right. is going to live on. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. We're Let's out of time. But thank not. you very much, gentlemen.